That's me uh, when I was about two years old. Uh, yeah, cute. Yeah. Um, but that was me when I was two years old. I, I only had one dream, and that's to become a princess. Um, I was uh, a young girl, but I, I looked a bit different than my classmates. Maybe a picture. I had uh, goofy hair. I had a round nose and a round cheeks, still do, and was kind of weird. I was sort of an outcast, you can say. I don't know if you know which one I am, but it's that little nerd on the right there. That's me. Um, it was going very good, but I want to take you back to where I got my name from, Karsu. I got my name from the village where my parents are born. It's called Karsu. And that was, this picture is taken, uh, I think, 10 years ago. There's actually nothing to do over there. But my mother came to Holland uh, to be reunited with her father, who worked here as a, as a guest worker. But my father, he came in a really different situation. He came, uh, he escaped Turkey as a political refugee when he was only 20 years old. My father and mother, they had dreams when they came here. My father wanted to be a musician, but he saw his first instrument when he was only 21 years old. My mother, she wanted to be uh, good in sports. She wanted to be a basketball player, but she was only one meter and 17 centimeters, so I don't know if that would work out. Um, but they were very, very happy in Holland, and their dreams actually led for me and my sister to have a great childhood here in Holland, in here, safe Holland. We had every opportunity we possibly could wish for. We uh, did sports, we played uh, many different instruments. We had every opportunity we wanted. At the age of seven, my father and mother, um, they collected money 5,000 gulden, it's old Dutch money, to buy themselves a car from, uh, for me and my sister also to bring us to school. But instead of a car, they bought me the love of my life. And that's my, still my white piano that I write my music on. And I think it's a quite good investment when you think back now. I still have that piano. And um, when I was seven, I started to play the piano. I was going to high school, everything was fine. My father uh, still has a restaurant in Amsterdam. At the age of 14, I start to play uh, a little tune on the piano. And uh, the people who came to eat the amazing kebab we have <laughs> and drink the wine, they started to like my music. But I was shy, I said, no, I don't want to play. And my father said, you can do it. No, I can't. I was just a waitress, but sometimes I would go behind the piano and play a little song. And more, and more, and pe more people uh, liked to hear it, so they came for the music every weekend. That was going also very good. I still went to high school, but one day I got asked um, to play in Carnegie Hall. I was 17 years old. I said, okay, I'll go. The day bef before I went to New York, I said, what's, what's Carnegie Hall? And I went behind my little laptop and I googled Carnegie Hall. Whoa, I said to myself, that's way, way too big. I cannot play there. But I said to myself, you can do it. I went on a plane, I performed there, I came back, and I found myself at the Wereldraaitor, at Paul Wittemann, and they all asked, you went to Carnegie Hall, a Turkish young girl, what were you doing there? I don't know, just play. In New York, I fell in love. I fell in love with the city, but also with the music it brought me, jazz. I used to play classical music, but the jazz gave me the freedom that my father was looking for in Turkey, the freedom in music, that I could play whatever I wanted to instead of the pieces of the classical um, composers hundreds of years ago. 
That music brought me freedom. And I said to myself, I really, really like to play music. I always wanted to be a princess, but maybe a musician is close enough. So I studied very hard, and I said to myself, if I finish high school, maybe I will go to the conservatory and have a real education over there. I studied very hard and put all my shyness away, and I went to the audition. I went there, I did my song, I told my story, and said, okay, life is starting now. I'm going to study, I'm gonna be so cool. And I did not get in. And I was, I was blown away. I, I stepped outside, I said, how is this? How is this possible? I trained so hard. And the guy who took the audition, the teacher, he said, Karsu, do you really want this? Of course, of course I want this. Do you really want this? I stepped outside and I said to myself, I do, don't I? Yeah. I said, why did they, they accept all the other girls and why not me? Am I different? And I said, yeah, I'm different, but maybe that's a good thing. I'm Turkish and I'm Dutch. I have the Western culture and the Turkish culture. And that, that thing that made me different is maybe actually a good thing. So I went home behind my white piano and I studied very hard and I tried to write my own music, my own jazz, my own classical music and have the Turkish influence mixed within. Well, I work very hard, and I have this amazing team around me. My parents actually now are my managers. I have great bookers. But this team helped me so much to build up my career. It's, hard, it's not hard to uh, present yourself. When you want to be a princess, you just put the dress on and you're done. But still, me performing all around the world, it's a great gift. And still, I thought of myself not being the most professional musician there that I possibly could have been, because I did not get accepted into the conservatory. One time I had a concert that changed everything. I was playing at the North Sea Jazz Festival here in, uh, in Rotterdam, and I was so nervous. And I got on stage and I played after Quincy Jones and after me on stage was Nora Jones performing. And I was in the middle. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> and I got on stage and I saw the teacher who said, Karsu, do you really, really want this? Front row. He had to buy a ticket to see me. That felt so good. <laughs> and I said, okay. Maybe I'm good. Well, now everything is going very well. I travel all around the world thinking that I'm still a princess. And it's going very good. But one year ago, I toured with an orchestra. It's called uh, the Ricciotti Ensemble. We played for one and a half week in Holland and we played for one week in Turkey. We also wanted to play at the refugee camps near the border of Syria. We could not get that close because it was too dangerous. But we said, let's go to the border of Syria, to the village, Karsu, where my parents are from. And you have a lot of refugees there. We went there and I sung an Arabic song. And I saw the people in front of me cry, the refugees. They came to me after the concert. They cried. I could not understand that, but I could see the tears in their hearts and in their faces. We talked with our hands and our eyes. I came back to Holland and I thought, I have to do something. I always thought that when I do something, it doesn't have to be public. I don't need to show everyone. But now I see that I have accomplished a lot of things and build up a big social media for myself that I can maybe make a change. A change. Give something back. Then. I got the call from Masterpiece, an organization that fights against war with music. And I said to myself, 
that's exactly what I need. That's exactly what's right on this place. I'm proudly now an ambassador of Masterpiece. And I'm really happy they asked me, and I'm so proud and honored that I can maybe make a change, make we can look at the other side of the world and what's going on right now. But today, I want to take you back to, to the problems that we have in other worlds. We can sleep with peace. We don't have to be scared. We don't have to be scared to run away from your home and leave everything behind. We are healthy and happy. And when you are, please do something back. I would like to sing a song for you now that I wrote from Masterpiece, just to make a change, just to make a difference. Thank you. Don't 